Hi guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you my third born, Luca's birth story. I plan in 2018 to share all my kids' birth stories around their birthday. So that's why we're starting out with number three because he has the first birthday of the year. I think sharing birth stories is a great idea because um, for one, they will have a record of it, the child themselves. I'd love to tell them their birth stories around their birthday and this is a good way to get all those details down and recorded um, because my brain is forgetting more all the time and then also i think it's great to listen to birth stories um, when i was pregnant with my eighth child i discovered the birth hour which is a podcast i absolutely love um, and twice a week they do stories of women and their birth stories, and they're all different kinds of birth stories. It helped me so much with my eighth pregnancy in my labor and delivery, which you'll hear about at the end of March when it's her birthday, but I think it's really great to share birth stories and to listen to birth stories if you're pregnant and expecting, because you can get a lot of great ideas or what you don't wanna do out of those birth stories. So if you're interested in hearing this, stick around. found out I was pregnant with Luca um, it was late spring or early summer and there were two significant things that were happening at that time one of them was that we found out my sister-in-law was also expecting and this would be my brother's wife and it was their first child so this was our third and this was their first but they were in Lincoln at the time um, for at least the beginning of her pregnancy so it was really exciting to find out that we were not only expecting at the same time but we were due within four days of each other. So that was really exciting. The other thing significant happening is we were just planning to move and we had just decided where we wanted to build our house and we were starting that journey. So the beginning of my pregnancy began our building of our new house and that house took about nine months to build and it lasted our whole pregnancy. So. Um, during the pregnancy, the whole time we were working on fixing up the house we were currently in. Um, it was a lovely house. We absolutely loved it, but um, it only had two bedrooms on the main floor and we had a non-conforming bedroom in the basement that was really far away. So we knew it wasn't going to work as our family kept growing. We had the two kids in the one bedroom and we probably could have put a third in there, but our oldest was only two. So we when Luca was born we had three kids under three for a couple of weeks so they were all young close together and we knew we needed a bigger place so we were trying to sell our house fixing it up showing it all the time and it was a whole lot of work um, with two little kids a two-year-old and one-year-old and being pregnant and I just remember that that pregnancy was very stressful in the fact that we were constantly showing our house and Constantly, I think the biggest stressor was that we were constantly having to clean it to perfection. If you've ever sold a house, you know, especially with little kids around, you know that cleaning a house to sell it is not like just cleaning your house. It's like a whole nother level of crazy. So that made that his pregnancy especially difficult. Our house did take the entire nine months to sell. So it actually sold right before it was our new one was ready for us to move in and we had a plan that maybe it would sell early and we'd move out and stay somewhere else in the meantime but we ended up having to clean it like that and show it like that for the whole nine months so that was <laughs> that was interesting but um we did find out the gender with luca with um our previous one we had not found out the gender and actually our previous two kind of and um with bell i had been very surprised our our number two baby and I didn't like that feeling so much of, I was quite sure it was a boy and it turned out to be a girl. And it took my brain a little while to adjust to that. So with Luca, I definitely just wanted to know. And so we were really excited to find out it was a boy. And I remember that we were sitting on the foundation of our house. Um, it was just starting to be built up uh, when we decided on his name, which is Luca. He's named after my brother, Luke. And it's, his name is Swahili. Um, Luca is and then his middle name is David which is Solo's dad's middle name and it's also my maiden name so that worked out pretty good and so we were really excited to welcome Luca and um, so 
Fast forward to Christmas Eve. This was the due date of my sister, my sister-in-law's due date. And I had told her, oh, don't worry here, I'm such an expert, right? I told her, babies never come on their due dates, so your baby won't arrive on Christmas Eve. But sure enough, she had her baby right on the due date, right on Christmas Eve. And so that was really exciting, but I tell you, it made me, and they were not in, they were not in our city at the time. So um, they had already moved to their new city, but I was so anxious after that. I just kept thinking, okay, my baby needs to come any day. So she was due December 24th. I was due December 28th. So um, my pregnancies are all marked by a whole lot of um, contractions. I have especially a lot of contractions in the first trimester and in the third trimester, but I have them quite a bit even in the second. And so my contractions just were constant, constant, constant. And by Christmas day, I had quite a bit of them and they were really uncomfortable. I wasn't able to do much. And I was just sure this baby, she was gonna have a Christmas Eve baby and I was gonna have a Christmas day baby. And so I was just waiting around for this baby to come and we were kind of doing puzzles in the evening at the end of the Christmas day and I was so uncomfortable. So finally, finally I decided to go into the hospital. So having gone into labor two times before and I'm a nurse, I just, I was nervous that maybe I wasn't in labor but yet I felt like I might be to know I have not recorded my other two, my previous two birth stories yet, but to give you a little heads up, my labors are in really fast. They're really fast. And we live about 15 to 20 minutes away from our hospital, or we did at that time, or my parents' house was that far, I guess. And so I was, that's where we were that day on Christmas Day, and I was just kind of concerned about getting to the hospital on time if I was in labor. And so we decided to go in and, um, I was having very regular contractions. They were three to five minutes apart. Um, now I think it was prodromal labor, but I went in and they told me that this labor is not, these contractions, yes, they're consistent, but they're not progressing you at all, so it's not really labor. And I remember it was really exciting there. It was Christmas Day, so the nurses, they know how to make the best of it, and they were having a lot of fun, and. One of the nurses, her dad was there dressed as Santa and handing out gifts and it was fun. But at the same time, I was like incredibly disappointed. This is my first and last time so far that I've ever gone into the hospital and been sent home thinking or hoping I was in labor and I was not. And so it's kind of an embarrassing feeling. I didn't like it. And then the nurse that um, dealt with me, um, or she is she was my nurse she she sent me home but she wasn't like super <laughs> nice about it she's like you're not in labor girl you need to go home and I was just kind of I didn't feel very good about the whole situation and I really didn't like her she was my nurse three children later and I ended up loving her she ended up changing my labors for me so I'll tell you that story when I get to baby number six in August <laughs> but yeah, so we ended up going home and I was dragging my tail behind me. So that was that. On my due date, I had a doctor's appointment, the 28th. So I went in, still pregnant, and I was kind of frustrated at that point. I really wanted to have this baby. And my doctor at that time was my family doctor. I had actually worked for him as a nurse before. Loved him, super laid back, great guy. And he's like, well, we can try to induce you. And I was all about that. My previous two babies had both been induced with no issues at all and so I was I was up for it <laughs> but he called the hospital and they said we can't get you in anytime soon because everybody's trying to rush in and get their inductions before the end of the year so people are thinking a lot about tax breaks apparently at the end of the year so the earliest they could get me in was January 2nd and so I said I will take it <laughs> and we planned an induction for January 2nd. I now know it is probably easier to go into labor on your own, but I was very nervous, like I said, about getting into the hospital on time. My first birth was an hour and a half. My second birth was 45 minutes. So this being my third, I wasn't sure what to expect, but I know I did not want to give birth in the car. I remember our doctor even sat down with us with our second and third babies and reviewed with us what to do if we end up having 
to give birth on our own and don't make it to the hospital, whether it be at home or in the car. And just that whole thought kind of, it really kind of freaked me out. So I was happy to be induced on the second. And so I made it to the second, I stayed pregnant and we went in for our induction. So when we went on in on the second, there was something that really, my son just turned 11 and I still remember it very clearly. Um, it was really frustrating to me. This is probably the only, I think this is the only birth story I have where I was not thrilled with my nursing care. And um, uh, maybe being a nurse, I'm more sensitive to how the nurses are, but the one nurse sent me home, <laughs> which is obvious why I didn't like her. And then the other, the nurses when I went in on the second, all of them asked me, um, about my history and I would tell them well I had very fast labors and one by one every single nurse I encountered told me well this is your third and thirds are always different so don't expect a fast labor and they were all really quite negative about it and the hospital I go to is really naturally minded I, I love them for that they're very supportive in my non medicated births and I'd never have had had a problem like that about um, just negativeness I didn't have a problem before that and I never have had one since but that day for some reason my third they were all convinced that it could not go the same it would not be as easy as my others um, it was going to be difficult because it was my third and thirds are never the same and so I heard that story over and over and I would look at them and tell them it's gonna be easy it's gonna be just like the others and so I was induced I, I was induced with Cervidil just like the others I walked and walked and walked and walked for hours just like the others with no real pain except you know Braxton Hicks contractions type things and then when I was at three centimeters my doctor came in and broke my water just like the others and then I was um, put directly into labor and I remember looking at the clock and saying in 45 minutes I'm gonna have this baby my second had been 45 minutes, and I was just determined this baby is not gonna be different. It's not gonna be long and laborious, just because the nurses think <laughs> that a third has to be different. And sure enough, I went through this labor. Um, the one big difference about this one than my other ones is for some reason, right before I went into labor, I had gotten um, hooked on playing Sudoku in the little book with my little pencil. And so I had a Sudoku book with me and I had pulled it out and I, every contraction I was doing this game, this math game, and I could put it down in between and laugh and make jokes. Um, but the, as soon as I could feel that contraction starting, that tightening, I would tell my mom or my husband to give me the book really quick and I would start doing the game, doing the game, doing the game. It helped me so much get through those contractions. I couldn't even go through one without the book. And um, I really liked this labor compared to my previous two because I was so focused on that that it helped me deal with my pain a lot better and I felt like I had a lot more control. My previous two felt but when your labors are really fast, you go from three to 10 in 45 minutes or whatever, it is really intense. And I didn't have an epidural with this baby and the other two I didn't either, but I had felt a lot more like it was, I was completely out of control. Um, not myself, but I felt like the pain was just like, like I was dying. And when I was doing this game, the Sudoku, I felt like I had something else, somewhere else to put in my energy it helped me so much. Sure enough, 45 minutes later, I think it was one push and that baby was out. So I was so happy. I looked at those nurses and I was like, you see, it doesn't have to be horrible your third time if your first two were great. It doesn't have to be different. And um, yeah, it was just awesome. It was so great. It was such a good feeling. And so I felt really good about that labor and um, Luca was so cute. He was super cute. He had a little dimple <laughs> we could see already. And we just, we were in love the minute we saw him. And so um, the only other thing I remember about that particular time is that um, we went, it was the only time we actually, instead of going straight home, we went to my parents' house, I think for about a week, maybe it was only a few days. <laughs> I don't remember exactly. But we had two little kids, like I said, and 
we wanted the help plus we were just so sick of our house and that selling the cleaning all of that stuff and our new house that we were building was right across the street from my parents so it's kind of exciting being in that neighborhood but we stayed with them just for a little bit right after the baby for the extra help and i remember just getting to lay on the couch a lot and just hold the baby because um there were lots of adults around to help with the other kids and I think and hope it made it a little easier for my husband too because it didn't all fall on him. So I do remember that in particular. Um, it's really hard when you have three little kids, three and under, or under three in this case. And um, yeah, you don't, you just don't have older ones that can do things for themselves as much or help out in any way. And so that was a challenge, but, just, but having them around and um, being able to stay with them for a few days helped a lot in those first days of recovery. But my postpartum um, recovery times are always really smooth for me for the most part. I really enjoy it. Breastfeeding always hurts in the beginning, but then gets a lot better. So I never really struggled with postpartum depression or anything like that, which I am extremely thankful for. Uh, not even baby blues. And um, I just love that postpartum time. So the the yucky part for me is always pregnancy but once that baby is out i just feel like ah free woman <laughs> feels awesome so that is luca's birth story it was a it was a great labor and delivery and yeah i'll never forget it i hope and this video will help me never forget it right <laughs> so thanks for listening guys and i hope you guys have a great day we'll talk to you later bye